Welcome to ESCTV Today. Your bi-weekly cardiovascular news. Now we have medications that work across the entire spectrum of ejection fraction in heart failure. The trials that have been done have had very few patients in the placebo group who died suddenly. Closure of a patent for Aminovale to prevent stroke recurrence is substantially more beneficial when both a large shunt and an atrial septal aneurysm are present. Is there a systematic decision-making process when we are confronted with multiple sources of evidence? What is your advice regarding patients on oral anticoagulation? Clearly, they should be considered high bleeding risk, and this is really problematic. Those are the big dilemmas. Patients who require an oral anticoagulant are at high bleeding risk. This actually has many important amplification loops in it, rather than being a unidirectional pathway. Safety on board is our top priority, and should an emergency landing be necessary, the expertise and recommendations of medical professionals on board are highly appreciated. So the hypertrophy itself tends to be concentric, um, often associated with right ventricular hypertrophy. Much like there can be placebo effects in drug trials, there can be sham effects in sham controlled procedural trials. It was almost four decades later that the Brigada brothers established the connection between sudden cardiac death and this distinct ECG pattern termed the Brigada pattern. They published their observation in 1992. So we need to think intelligently, not just simply about the age, but the anticipated life expectancy of our patients. When we speak to patients with heart failure, uh, one of their key priorities is to feel better, to be able to do more things. But sometimes the condition of the patient does not allow us to wait, and we have to take these patients to, to theater earlier. In those circumstances, we just have to bite the bullet and, and face the music. Escalating diuretics is an important aspect of that therapy, but we know that as tricuspid regurgitation continues to be severe, that escalation um, at some point stops being effective. Now, these supplements included fish oil, cinnamon, garlic, turmeric, plant sterols, and red yeast rice. So this is a trial which should be very important in your daily clinical life because adding this drug will help your patients decongest easier. The myocardium seems to stretch like rubber. It sort of never stops. In general, all patients with STEMI or confirmed non-ST elevation cardi um, acute coronary syndrome with cardiogenic shock should be sent to the cath lab immediately. But the main message is that drinking coffee in reasonable quantities appears perfectly safe. So there, myth busted.